Hello, hello guys, this is Tuckcap and I'm playing on the Mindcrack server, of course guys, where else? Do your minecarts also behave like that if you are in multiplayer? That really is bizarre. It looks, it looks like it's warping out. <laughs> too crazy, too crazy. So yeah guys, whoa. So that I was just hanging out on the reddits, reading up on the latest stuff on the Minecraft subreddit. If you haven't checked it out, you really should. Um, yeah, slash r slash Minecraft. Pretty cool, you know. Um, I'm trying to read up there a lot and uh, trying to answer to, to some of the threads there. And so really cool. Okay. So and yeah, the London meetup uh, took place, which is really really. cool cool oh those leg spikes and yeah finally I didn't even know how badge looked <laughs> now I saw him very cool guy did I pick up this repeater now very cool guy oh man I'm so sad I couldn't go to London but yeah actually I, th I talked about it with the guys if I should come and yeah hang out a bit with them um, as well in the United Kingdom but sadly you know I had to come home because of the moving and stuff and today guys today might be actually the great day where Doc officially can move to his new apartment oh yes because when I came home <laughs> yeah the internet service provider saga continues guys when I came home <laughs> I missed you little woodpecker so Ah, uh, everything looks fine. I think we're cool. I hope. So yeah, <laughs> when I came home, internet service provider, of course, didn't call me in the meantime in Paris or whatever and make an appointment for the new internet connection. But I got a new funny thing from that. There is one woodpecker around here or more. <laughs> That really freaks me out. So yeah, um, they wrote me a mail that I have to send up my old modem finally. I have it for too long now as I have a new internet <laughs> connection now. And they said and when I don't send it back until the 29th, which was yesterday, I have to pay 150 euros for the modem. <laughs> yeah, for real. No kidding. No kidding, you, you, you know the story from before, if you missed it, maybe check out the other episodes that tell it there. No kidding, so they sent me an um, email now, or a letter even, saying, yeah, please give back, ah, there's one. <laughs> give back your modem, because we gave you a new one. I was like, okay, then I called, and then this time, before I was almost desperate, I was too tired to fight, but I recovered while I was at the Minecon and I gave them the <laughs> the angry dog, the really angry dog. And now they show up. Today, between one and three, they will come with two people and they have an appointment for four hours <laughs> and they will install my internets. If hell doesn't freeze over. And I tell you, if they don't do it today, if it doesn't work, I'm going to lose it completely. I'm, because then I have to stay in the old apartment for another month and pay that as well. And guys, that would be too crazy. Then I'll, I'll lose it. Then I'll, I'll go there and, and I don't know what to do then. And I, I just, <laughs> I will go berserk in their place. That's for sure. <laughs> so yeah, Minecraft is back. Most of the guys are home, um, good and paws are still on the road. Should be home as well, looking forward when they come home to see their review of the Minecon and Minecon and their experiences. For us it was all great, we are still blown away, voices are slowly but surely recovering. <laughs> was <coughs> yeah, <laughs> talking of it, was checking out the videos of B-dubs and so on. There was one. Somewhere. He also had broken voice. 
Man, I have to rewatch Generic's video probably and see where he did put them. It should take me forever. They are so well hidden. <laughs> but I don't want to collect freaking Woody Woodpeckers in each and every episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Here? Oh man. What have you done, Generic B? Ah. <laughs> yeah, so I, you could definitely hear it in the voices of all the guys that participated. <laughs> all voices destroyed, but slowly but surely recovering. It was just, we talked so much there, we met so many people. It's ticking somewhere over here. What is down there now? Ah. Well, in any case, today, guys, um, I wanted to make me an ice tray. Um, somewhat later, when I finally did the move, later this week, I want to meet up with Avidia again, keep on working on the Iron Golem farm. I worked a little bit before... Uh, here? Oh. I worked a little bit on it before we left uh, for Minecon. <coughs> so... We're making progress there. Let's let's build up. Here, I don't want to waste my ender pearls. I might go up and down here a few more often in the future. Make a little staircase. So yeah, the um, iron golem farm is coming along, but that was more like a long-term project. Me and Avidia started. Will be eventually finished. You know, just something we have to we can work on together. If you find some time to play together and catch up and chat a bit. Um, like a video a lot, he's a really cool guy, and it's a lot of fun to hang out and chat. So, pff, doesn't look like I can find any more woodpeckers, and yeah, for the ice tray, I of course have to go somewhere where there is ice. Do I have a bucket on me? Yes, I do. It's good, what else? I don't need many things. We're gonna make it out of wood. It's a cool system. Um, Panda was um, showing one of these lately and I found it's a nice way to make yourself an ice tray. So I'll go over to the ice area there and do some small preparations and then we get going. And whilst we do that, maybe I can tell you another story or two from the minecon. <laughs> Lots of funny stuff happened. So yeah, need to get me some wood and stuff. Maybe we use the dark wood over there. And yeah, I'll be back. All right, guys, we're over here. <coughs> Ice tray, right there in the back. Where the sun is rising, there's our tree house. Um, over there is the area where we had our first little wood farm in the beginning. And yeah, right now I'm trying to work out the ice tray design I saw in Pandas Let's Play was chopping down some trees, making me half slabs, and right now we just have this walkway here. Let me grab these blocks real quick. And yeah, goes along, it's um, 32 blocks of half slabs, so half a stack of ice can be produced in one of these rows. And the idea of the farm is basically like this. We will start it here. So let's put a trapdoor down like this and on top of these trapdoors and the trapdoors are just a bit cheaper than signs or are they the same? I don't even know but yeah trapdoors are okay there will be water flowing that will freeze and we will have these rows here and we will dash along with our um, silk touch tools and grab the ice and I think it's a pretty cool design nice alternative to the regular ice trays and it will be pretty fast I will probably make four lines so we have two stacks of ice in total or something. That should work out nicely. Ah yeah, back there you can see the treehouse. And later on, we can have a nice rail system coming over. I was talking, I wanted to have, or saying, I wanted to have a railway going up a skyline, maybe to a nice destination. And I think the ice tray then over here will definitely be a good destination. And yeah, of course, we're in an icy area. You can see the ice on the floor. So yeah, I'll keep on working on that for a little bit so the principle becomes more obvious 
and then I'll be back. So while I'm working here a little bit, <laughs> I want to quickly tell you a funny story that happened at the Minecon. So um, we go to this pub, it was called König Ludwig's pub. So they tried to mock some kind of German Middle Ages king thing or something there. Um, was pretty weird uh, in general, you know, the, the style of Disneyland is pretty weird, you know, they try to, yeah, mock up certain things, but they don't really go into detail, so it's, as a German dude, and as you know how the style of King, uh, König Ludwig, the king of Bavaria was, it was pretty funny, so, but anyways, we were in there just having a good time, um, talking to um, people there, and drinking a little bit, and um, right from the get-go, there were a few guys there. I think it was four or five guys from Netherlands. And they were really cool, hanging out, weren't friendly, but I already saw, oh, those guys are here for a lot of party. And <coughs> potentially, uh, yeah, when people are out for party at an odd place like Disneyland, um, you're in for trouble. I could feel it coming, but yeah, they were staying cool, being nice. Um, and yeah, I was using some of my Dutch words I knew, um, you know, just the, the small things, you, you know, thank you, uh, or I should be bedankt, and, and those things. And we were actually yeah, being really friendly with each other. So there we go. I think that's almost it. I need to get another bucket. So. <clears throat> Everything works out fine, but then I see guys, those guys are really drinking hard. Uh, we're drinking a lot of shots, and I knew they were sooner or later were bound to be fairly drunk. And they were pretty loud mouths before and started to be a bit funny with the barkeeper. <coughs> the barkeeper um, was a black guy, a black dude, and you know, they were starting to uh, make racial jokes, and that is something I absolutely don't like. Racialism is something that really tig tickles my Doc M spider senses or um, however you want to call it. So, oh, that's a nice chunk, chunk error. F3A, reload all. And yeah, I kept an eye on them and the barkeeper, you know, it was Disneyland. I mean, in a normal bar, I think he would have stepped up and just crushed them because he was a tool, tool, uh, uh, a tool. <laughs> you could say a tall, strong guy. He was like huge, you know. So I wouldn't like, yeah, offend, offend this brother. But he he knew uh, better be cool. I don't want to lose my job. And those guys took advantage of that. So we kept looking at them, and I tried to calm them down a little bit. Ever so often, say, hey guys, come on, chillax. It's Disneyland. I said, no, we're here having a good time, we took a break from our job and came here to drink. I said, yeah, but why on earth would you pick Disneyland to come to drink? I mean, it's a kid's place, right? It's not like the best place to go make party. They, the guys came from Amsterdam, so I wondered why they didn't just stay. Amsterdam is a great uh, city to party. But anyways, so um, B-Dubs, Janek B arrive and a few other guys. I was already there with Paws, and Paws is a big fellow as well, so um, they didn't pick on us. He gave Paws a little bit of a stare down before, and Paws was like, what the heck, dog, is that some <laughs> special European tradition here, drinking or what, do we have to <laughs> do the stare or what? And I was like, no, I think those guys are in, in for some trouble, but yeah, I knew, you know, if you travel to Europe, go to a foreign country, and you come from Canada or the United States, you don't want to get into trouble, so I knew the guys, you know, were in a bit of an odd situation there. So still, we, we're not looking for a fight and being, being aggressive. But <laughs> then one guy kind of walked up to Bidabs, one of these guys, and he had his friend with him and was really giving Bidabs the stare and really was calling him out, like saying, ooh, stupid American and other things I don't want to repeat here. And then I had enough. <laughs> so... Guys, I'm not saying fights are good or whatever, but some people sometimes don't understand um, a different language, so I had to get up and grab him. Uh, his friend was a bit shocked because they thought uh, they had everything under control, and when I stood up, they realized, oh, dang, this guy is tall. 
<laughs> this could mean some trouble. Um, I had him. B Dubs was frozen at the moment because he didn't know what was going on, and I, as I said, I completely understand that. You go to a foreign country, you know, and the last thing you want is uh, to get in a fight with some drunk weirdos. So um, before it really could start, I was about to, yeah, take the first guy on. Suddenly, the barkeeper jumps in, basically from the side, and another security guard was there already. So the barkeeper saw what was coming. And he was just waiting. So they grabbed him, uh, threw them outside. Or, well, they did it in a friendly way, as it was Disneyland. In another club, those two guys would have, or three guys in the end, would have gotten the, the beaten of the lifetime. <laughs> they, got one, they had one guy with them, you know, he tried to be cool and, and you know, be just normal and try to calm the situation down. You often have that. You have, like, three guys that just go crazy and you have one guy that is the more reasonable one and tries to just have a good time but yeah for those guys obviously having a good time meant being a complete retard and trying to start fights with random people so <laughs> that was one story and it really it really bugged me out a bit you know you got friends um, coming over and <coughs> one of one of their first experiences they have to make is get in a fight with some we are drunk people, not nice, annoyed me a bit, but yeah, as I said, fighting is not the solution. Normally, I rarely get or got into fights, um, <coughs> well, <laughs> around um, Halloween, I had to chase down some guys that were throwing eggs at my house, and I had my window open, but that is another story <laughs> that might never make it to the public. <laughs> Yeah, and that was our experience at King Ludwig. Really annoying, and um, but yeah, Paws was looking or also, so we would have taken them, probably. But better like that. I thought, oh man, now I have to have a fight here. We can fill it up from below, but it's better to see from the top. And we will have the Minecon panel or the Minecraft panel, and then I will look like a crazy man, beaten up with a black eye, you know. <laughs> But I thought, ah, oh, screw it. Um, in that situation, you can't, you can't, you know, accept something like that. Especially, you know, when they were just drunk, I have some understanding, and you can always, you know, just be funny with them and negotiate. But when they started to do the racialist comments towards the barkeeper, mm, that really, yeah, was the final nail in the coffin for them. And yeah, also, yeah, as the barkeeper was. Yeah, in a bad spot, you know, they they were just Yeah. Being idiots. Let's let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. So that was one the only let's say weird or negative experienced uh, experience we guys had at the Minecon. Other than that it was just great. From A to Z partying, um or and also you know, meeting people. Um it's just amazing. All right, sweet. Now we're getting sauce blocks all the way. Cool, there we go. That is the basic shape of an ice tray, like that. And we got freezing, we got freezing going on. Yeah, there you have these ice blocks and the idea would be you just do this, you you walk through and grab your ice blocks like that and you can have several rows next to each other, of course longer rows as well. And just go back and forth and freezing time in one of these uh, setups should be fairly quick. That is an advantage because you have solid block there basically helping the freezing process. I hope it we get accelerated freezing here as well as we have the half slab there. I'm not quite sure. Might have to consult with Panda a little bit about that. Or just watch it a little bit or just do some tests. Looks like it's freezing fairly quick. It's working. I will put in maybe um, yeah three more rows here next to each other, maybe in a loop. We enter here and you exit 
on one side so wait a minute we go we enter here we go down we go up we need one row we go down we go up yeah f three more rows that would be two stacks and then we ha could have like a circle where we run through yep so I'll add a little bit here yeah just did some testing and I'm sure we should have full blocks um, along here that will speed up the freezing of the ice, definitely make it way quicker. The half slabs here don't do the trick. And also, um, there's a chance, well, I'm not 100% sure about it, but the main thing is, if you have it like I do now, no ice block can kind of stay up here. You saw that one ice block there? That is for sure. So. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe that's bound for some testing. I had a small, quickly went to a creative world and had a small pond. Um, but, well, in the end, as you have to have this um, row up here anyways to make sure you grab all the ice, it's not important. But it would be interesting to know if half slabs affect it the same way. I assume, though, it should be the same. So, yeah, we got one row completed. <coughs> I think I will just have a walkway around here and then start the next row so we could use the same source blocks. Let's quickly swim up here. Yeah, I could add the next row right there. That would make sense so we save up on some source blocks. So it would be right here below. Yep, let's build out the platform a bit. But that's a nice ice tray. Let's go through it one, one time and see how it feels when we run through. Could maybe have speed potions going or a beacon close by. Okay, so we are in there then. Later on I have to have a railing on this side. Just let's sprint. Yep, and then we would go around, go into the next row, go back and can run around here as long as we want. And we would always have freezing. And if you wait for a while, of course, everything would be frozen. Then you get the full two stacks. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, so the next walkway would be... Where would it be? Yeah, and there, so we put a solid block. Oh, do I have my mine cape con on? By the way, mine cape con, mine con cape on. Oh, yeah, that's it. You can turn it on and off, it's floating in the wind. It's kind of cool, fits nicely with my wardrobe, but the other one was definitely cooler. Too bad I don't have it. If you have like both, there's an option. Um, you can choose which one you want to use. It's pretty nice. So here is our next walkway, and we will stick the trapdoors to this side then, and we extend it so it's pretty compact. Let me see what is the wood situation. Oh yeah, I got some. All right, I keep on building here a bit. At least we want to finish the second row, so we have the full stack. Ouch. <laughs> I was counting blocks, he snuck up on me. Ah. All right. <laughs> My stuff was spread all over the ice. Uh, the creeper blew up there. I was counting out blocks um, to space out the lighting here. And oh, he took a little bit out there. Okay. Might not freeze all over, it's covered. I might get some ice blocks and just fill it in. And yeah. Last but not least, I have to remove some of the wood upstairs and maybe fill in some water. There we go. Now we can extend it and can feed two sides with the sauce block row only in the middle there. focus on digging here. Always having a hard time multitasking. <laughs> okay, 
get a source from here, put it in there, it should fill it up all the way. All right, now we just need whoop, source block in here still, because we broke that before in the wrong way. Okay, good. Let's bring down the doors. Awesome. Torches down there should be all right. And we prevent mob spawning in here. We don't want that. And that looks like a nicely working ice tray to me. Yeah, then we come around the corner, we have more here, do a few rows of these and from now on we can carry around ice blocks all the time, it's really helpful for water, um, you don't have to have the buckets on you all the time, just a few, just a stack of ice with you and of course transportation and things, um, which is really important for farming, because yeah, I at some stage I need to make me a, a farm here, uh, a mob farm, out on the sea, probably gonna put it out on the sea, have an AFK stream leading over to the base and an item elevator, bringing the items up and storing them there for me. Thus I need a lot of ice because um, yeah, I need to do some ice transportation, I need that. And an ice tray is always something you need. So I might extend that uh, quite a bit over the next few episodes or days. So when people want to come over and grab a lot of ice, they can definitely do it here. Because I think if you extend that, it's a quick and easy design for your world. No redstone needed, just a bit of wood, and you find that in taiga biomes anyway. So yeah, quick job, nicely working. Freezing over again, happy with the design. Good idea, Panda, <laughs> as usual. Good stuff. Thanks for watching. Have fun if you want to try to build one of these. So it's really simple. See you next time. Bye bye.